أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, uh, first of all, I I want to uh, apologize for for being late. I'm literally, literally just getting back from Chicago. I was supposed to be back on Wednesday, but then I received an opportunity to speak at one of the largest centers in the Chicago area, if not the largest, the uh, uh, what is it called, the Islamic Foundation, I think, in Villa Park. And then on Thursday evening, something happened. Uh, th there was a tragedy that took place involving a young person. And this is what I'm going to speak briefly to, a young person who grew up in that community, graduated from the school, 18 years old. He became the youngest, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the latest, I should say, the latest young Muslim to be entrapped in a quote-unquote terrorism conspiracy. And as quickly as the invitation that was extended to me to speak after Salatul Juma uh, to two, uh, both Salats at the Villa Park, it's such a large center, they have two Salats. As quickly as it was given, it was rescinded because the board got cold feet. Um, and then, but alhamdulillah, there was another much smaller masjid in the city of Chicago that then extended an invitation for me to speak there. And uh, the short of it is that I left at 5.30 this morning, Chicago time, driving, and I'm just getting in. So uh, I'm glad, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be here, but this brings me to what I wanted to contribute to this discussion in terms of empowerment. Brothers and sisters, we as an ummah in this part of the world, we must give more attention to two things. We must give more attention to the needs of our young brothers and sisters, especially young brothers. The young brothers who are a targeted group. Back in 2002, uh, a few months after the tragedy of 9-11, the number two man at the Justice Department, Viet Dinh, the top deputy to then uh, uh, U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft delivered a speech at the American Bar Association in Naples, Florida, in which he openly, for the first time, stated very specifically that young Muslim males between the ages of 18 and 35 are being profiled. And since that speech was delivered in January of 2002, now we're in September of 2012, I can't count the number of cases like this one that just went down in Chicago. And in order for us to be able to empower our community, we must give due attention to what our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about the responsibility that we have as individuals and as a community to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. There is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherein he said, and this shows how serious this matter is. He said, by the one in whose hand rests my soul, you must surely enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Otherwise, it is expected that Allah will send against you a punishment from him and you will supplicate him, but your supplications will not be answered. And then there is another hadith that, that speaks to this issue wherein, and, and it's a beautiful promise that Allah gives us through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said, indeed from my ummah, there are a folk who shall receive rewards equivalent to the rewards of the early ones, meaning my companions. Why? Because they forbid the evil. Now, brothers and sisters, it's not an easy thing to do. It is not an easy thing. To, it's not a comfortable thing to do. But the most important thing that we can, one of the most important things that we must do is on the basis of our faith. Our faith is an action-oriented faith. 
This is a dean. It's not just empty ritual. This is a dean. It requires us to act. And we have got to uh, be good examples for our young as they're growing up that we have faith in what Allah has said and what the Prophet Sallallahu has said about both the responsibility and the rewards that come from discharging that responsibility. It's not easy, but it's what we must do. And toward that end, one of the things that we must begin to do more of is have the kind of political discussions. And when I say political, I'm not just talking about inviting politicians into the masjid to politic, to raise money, to get votes, while excluding having the kind of discourse in the house of Allah that we need to have with our young in order to help them navigate how they feel and the pressures they, that, they, they, that are upon their, their, their souls. I'm, I'm seeing too many examples of these young brothers and Increasingly sisters who are finding their ways in, in their homes, in their basements, together in groups, some, two or three, sometimes in groups, going on the internet into the jihadi chat rooms, jihadi websites, and, and young brothers and sisters, those of you who are here, I, I, your brother Salakan strongly advises you to stay away from those jihadi websites and chat rooms. They're poison, and most of them are being closely monitored. Some of them have even been set up for the purpose of drawing you in. Stay away from them. But we have got to begin to have the kind of discourse in the masjid that our young brothers and sisters need in order to show them what they can do about how they feel, about what they see happening to Muslims both here and abroad, what we can do that would be effective and safe and within the law to push back. So with that, um, I said I, I only had a three-minute introduction, so mashallah, that, that's it. <laughs>